Thanks for joining me for another THG Automation tutorial. We've developed a UR cap that integrates the Universal Robots UR10E with Fronius MIG welding equipment of various capabilities from their air-cooled push system, water-cooled push system, push-pull for aluminum, uh, specifically for aluminum, uh, and then our push-pull advanced or uh, what is the CMT torch, which is what we're going to have today. Um, we uh, have some existing programs in here in a pendant, if you can see, and um, today we're going to talk about uh, doing circular welds. Um, we're not going to get into any weaving or any of the other functionality that is covered in other videos. Um, but I want to talk about circular welds because when we do uh, training on customer sites and uh, um, at our uh, office, sometimes the um, the circular weld function <clears throat> itself is pretty easy, but the planning for it can uh, can be a little bit of a, a process. So um, let's let's go through doing a 360 degree weld today with this part that I've got setting up here. Um, we're not going to do any welding, just showing the process. Um, first thing I do when I discuss uh, circular welds is planning, right? So let's let's create a new program here. Um, we're not going to save the existing <clears throat> and get rid of the loop. And so with with circular welds, it's important to train the positions or teach the positions of the robot so that you get a, a true circle. And so what happens is the robot takes the points that you put in and it creates a uh, interpolated path around that part. So if you, let's say um, your points are too close to each other um, or they're irregularly uh, placed, uh, you're gonna get some really um, undesirable uh, results. Um, and uh, so the circular uh, function, and we're gonna go, go ahead and pull up an air move, and then we're gonna pull up a weld start. Um, and we're gonna show the visuals on the screen so that you can see this. So with an air uh, circular weld, first you have to create a weld. Um, we've got a weld start, a midpoint, and a weld end that we've just put in the, the, uh, the screen through our nodes. Um, let's select that weld move P. And so that traditionally would be for a linear weld. Um, in this case, we're going to go to movement parameters. And we're going to go to the uh, box that says choose weld move. And we're going to select weld move C instead of the P. So you see that box drop down, weld move C. I'm going to select that instead. And some other options showed up on this screen. But if we go back to movement locations, you'll see this visual that we put in this in our UR cap. So it helps uh, understand what is happening here. So if you see, you've got your from point, which is the green dot on the screen. Um, and then you have your via point and you have your two point. So every circular weld has to start with a previous mood move to get the weld started. So in our case, we've got a weld start in the beginning. And then our first option is weld move C. And that's what we got, we see right here. And so the move C has two points in it. So our start point is actually that from point, that green dot. So we're assuming there's already a, part, a point in which we're coming from. And then we have a via point, which is what we're gonna go through. And we have a two point, which, we're, which is what we're gonna go to. So every arc has to have three points. So we have our, our from point, which is green, which means we have to come from someplace, which could be a start which could be another uh, circular, the, the end of another circular weld, or it could be a straight weld. So it could be from a, a midpoint to a circular weld. Um, however you wanna get there, um, this is how it works. So um, also those points need to be kind of divided in, in, in threes, or there needs to be two, it needs to be a bisection or um, a evenly placed uh, via point from the from point to the two point. So that way you get some really good results. So in this case, uh, we want to go around this part. And what I like to do is for a really good uh, result, uh, I like to have uh, eight points, which when we get done, we'll have um, nine. But I'll show you what, what I mean here in a minute. Uh, but I like to have eight points, meaning we're going to split this part into halves, quarters, and then we're going to split it again so we get it in eighths or every 45 degrees around this part so that will take four move c's um, so we'll we'll go ahead and add uh, three more 
So in this case, we're going to use a copy and fa a paste function. So copy just down to the bottom of uh, left column, the second le column from the left, and down at the bottom you'll see scissors, and you'll see two black boxes, and you'll see kind of a, a, a box that looks like a, a clipboard. So we're going to hit the two bo black boxes, and then we're going to hit the clipboard once, and then we're going to hit the clipboard again, and then one more time. So now we've got four move C's. So we'll have a start, a 45 degree, a 90 degree. That'll be our first move C. Then we'll have 135 and then 180 and then so on. So we're going to divide this circular weld up into 45 degrees. It really makes it easier because we well, could do less, but if you only do, let's say two circular welds, it just doesn't work as well. And sometimes you get some, some errors where it's trying to interpolate such a huge move. It just doesn't work very well. So this is the easiest to remember where you're cutting it in, into 45 degrees. It's not some odd dimension like 30, 60, 90, anything like that. So, um, so we'll just stick to this and I'll show you how we plan this out. So we're going to grab a Sharpie and we're going to start, first of all, we need to think about how we're going to go around this. Well, with the robot, um, because of the way it interacts with the joint, let's, we want to start with the robot unwound or wound up, I'm sorry, wound up. So, um, we don't want to start a 360 degree weld like this, because if we go all the way around, then we could end up running into some type of, you know, obstruction with the, with the, the um, weld whip, or maybe we are run out of, of, of joint, um, movement because it's max rotation. Um, so let's just start out with winding up the torch like this. Um, we could also go from the other direction. So we could go clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's bring the robot in and let's just plan for our first position. We're going to come in to, let's say, you know, about right here, right up against the clamp. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on teach mode. And that way we can, so now we can see that uh, our, uh, our teach mode is keeping us from bending this wire off. So let's come in. Let's create this initial point. Like that. Now we've got a position that we want to start. So let's create, let's bisect this out so it makes sense. So let's create a Sharpie mark there. And then let's come across and let's create a Sharpie mark about 180 degrees out. All right. Now we can create a Sharpie mark here at 90 and then at 270 and then so forth so we can get this broken into 45 degree angles of course we're just eyeballing this so if it's a little off that's fine but we need to get as close as we can for the best results so we're going to bring our camera up and kind of see see how those those positions look around our round uh, our circular part so let's start out again. Let's get in here to this, this position here. And we'll... You notice how that teach mode is really helping us keep that wire from getting bent off. So there we have it. So there's, let, let's call that our start position. So let's go to our weld start. And let's press create waypoint. Not going to worry about the weld parameters or anything right now, but just remember that the weld parameters need to be set for each one of these nodes. Um, typically, if we did a weld like this, we could come in, start really hot, and then come around and, and then maybe pick another job, or maybe we start with the arc start parameters with a delay, so we have a slope, and the slope slowly uh, cools the weld down as we're going along. There's lots of things we could do with the Fronius power source, um, but let's just keep it like this for now. Um, and then we're going to start going around the, the weld. So what I do is I count. Um, so our start is always, um, our, our zero point. So we have one, two. So our first two points over here, you can't see it in one of the cameras, but what the first two points, one, two, that's our first move. And then one, two is our second move. One, two is our third move. And one, two is our fourth move. So we always want to count. Um, if we miss where we're at, we always go back and count again, so that way we don't get messed up. A lot of times it happens where uh, customers will get out of out of sync and they'll they'll modify the wrong point. 
Um, so we always want to count. If, if you have to, just go back and start over uh, with your count. But you, sh you should always you know, make sure that you understand which one of those points it belongs where in your program. So uh, let's go ahead and go to the next position. And I'm not going to be super duper. Um, uh, ain't, uh, it's not going to be really important to get this right on the money because we're just trying to demonstrate the process. So let's go to the next move C. Now, if you look in our um, our moves, we have a, a column here for our via position where it shows, you know, create waypoint. And then you have the update and move to waypoint. Uh, those are grayed out because we haven't created that waypoint yet. So let's say create waypoint and let's press OK from this point. Now let's go to our next position. So we're going to rotate this around. And let's call that then our next position in the first weld or move C. So create waypoint, and there we have it. So that is turned now white, meaning that that position has been updated. So let's go to the next one. So this will be our next move C. So we get that started. So we click on the next one, and then we're gonna go create waypoint. And then OK. And let's move to our next one. Fans are kicked on a little bit because it's using the power source for the, for the uh, teach mode. So now we're on our second position of our second move C. Create waypoint. And then OK. Now we go to our third one. Set this up like that. Great waypoint. Update. And then so on. All the way around. <clears throat> and now we have our last weld move C. So we'll get that over to this position here. Great waypoint, update. And now our final. And the way I handled this is, you know, if I want a little bit of a push angle in the, the weld, now I can create that because now I'm having to pass this clamp. We'll bump that up a little bit. There we go. Great waypoint. Update. Now there's two things we can do at this point. We can just bump the torch over a little bit and create the, the end, or we can just call the start and end the same position. So what I'm gonna do here is if we go to movement parameters and that last move C, what you'll see is over in the top right, you'll say end weld on move C. So we're going to check that box. And now the, the robot will not want to go to that last, that last weld end node. It'll stop on this move C. So um, let's go back over and let's, um, for the weld end, we're going to just call it this position. Um, so it doesn't really matter because it's not going to use that weld, that end weld to actually um, do anything because it's we just told it to, to end on that move C. So I'm going to back the robot out like this, and um, I'm going to give it a move to get out of there. So we're going to create a waypoint to that linear move out. And then I'm going to come over here. Have to be careful that we don't. Let's go ahead and add another move in here so we can get this wrapped around. And then finally, we'll set our first position, which will be over here. So we we'll go to the top. Our linear error move at the top is still yellow. So we'll select that and let's create waypoint. All right, 
So now we've got all of our points that go all around. We have our error moves to get us to and from. So, hey, let's try this out. Let's make sure our simulation is held on in our toolbar. It is. So let's uh, hit play and see what happens. You notice our teach mode is keeping that wire right in the joint. My program points aren't perfect, so. But the stick out actually looks pretty good. And there you have it. So that's pretty much it. Um, circular moves, they're easy, but they're they take more planning, so that's what makes them a little bit more complicated. Um, so, you know, if we wanted to go in and add weeds, we can. Um, we can we can have this thing go in and do um, a uh, a wire sense. That's more of a simpler method of creating a a uh, circular weld, but being practical about planning. Um, if you want more information, reach out to us either on YouTube or through our website and uh, look for more videos coming soon. Thank you very much.